Incremental models allow you to process just the most recently updated records in a data source. And this is really helpful because sometimes you don't wanna to have to rebuild an entire table and process every single record every single time. But setting up your incremental models takes a few steps. And I find that this is something that trips people up. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is number one, break down what incremental models are all about. Number two, I'll go step-by-step step through building an incremental model. And then number three, see what this looks like when we start adding new data and what the whole process looks like. Unlike the typical table materialization, in this one, it's going to filter the rows that are only new or updated records. And this limits the amount of data that needs to be transformed, which can vastly reduce the runtime for your transformations, improve performance, and potentially reduce compute costs. You have a config block to say materialize incremental. And then down here, there's an if Jinja statement, and it's looking at this is incremental. If this evaluates to true, it will drop in this query right here, and which is effectively going to filter your data set. If this results to false, it won't show this and everything is going to run just as normal and it'll just completely refresh your table. And if we look at this where statement, this is important to understand before we get started. In this case, they're looking at event time or it would be whatever column represents, you know, the, like a timestamp or something like that to show the latest record, something that you can identify or maybe it's an ID. It's going to look where that column value is greater than the max of that column value. So in this case, the max event time, the most recent event time from this. And this represents the current current context of the table. So whatever model you're looking at in this context, so this would be staging events, but maybe it's invoices or customers, whatever that model is. It's in this case, by default, you're just going to append data. But once you start adding unique keys and stuff, you can look at different strategies and do some merging and stuff like that. And what we're doing in our case is we're pulling the invoices table and it's saying when incremental is true, when it evaluates to true, our filter condition is say, look at the invoice that date. And if in this source data, it's greater than the max invoice date already in the table included into the CTE, which then gets passed along, which effectively turns that into the final result set. So your final CTE is trimmed down because this is trimmed down. Hopefully you're following that. I also have a column here that's using the invocation ID. And this is just to allow us to see a unique identifier for each run so we can track what we're doing here. You can decide if you want to keep that there or not. It's good for logging. And I think I talked about that in another video. So what we're going to do is do a DBT run. What we should see happen here, this is going to evaluate to true or false, and it will return true if all of the conditions are met. Number one, the destination table already exists. DBT is not running in full refresh mode, which we'll talk about later, which is effectively just restarting everything. It's just, and the running model is configured to this materialization. So if we look at ours here, we pass two of the three tests. We have the materialized set. We have the is incremental macro here. It's it's sitting here, but we don't have the table already existing in our database here. It doesn't already exist. So it should just be a normal table run. So if we refresh this, we shouldn't really see much of a difference. It should just be five columns. So here we can see it grabbed all the data. It gave everything the same batch ID because it all ran together. That will help us identify the differences. And here's that invoice, that date. So going forward, anything that's after this date will be considered new in our example, but imagine it's bigger data set or another stuff you're working on. The other thing I'll point out here is the default process without any strategy set is to append only. So it's going to just add new records. So even if there are duplicates, it's just adding new values in here. It's not taking into effect there. And in fact, there are any primary keys right now. It's just inserting. If we go to the run, we can see it just did a create or replace because it didn't do the incremental work that we wanted it to because it didn't pass all those steps. Hey, real quick, if you're enjoying this video and you're looking for a little bit more help on getting started with DBT or just clarifying some of the concepts, I've put together a free guide along with some other resources to help give you some clarity on the main concepts to help you feel way more comfortable learning DBT or using it on the job. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link below or you can go to startwithdbt.com. All right, so now let's try to insert data. Now we can get to the point where we're adding something new. So go down here to the second batch and run this insert statement right here. Select from the second one here. This is our raw data set. If we look at this here, now we can see we've added these three new ones here. And the great date, each of these is later than this one, which is the most recent one. So we should only get these three inserted. But again, just imagine if it's millions and millions of records, or even if you don't have that many, it's just nice to have. Now let's do a DBT run invoices again. And now that there's new data let's see what happens and we would expect this to pass be true because we have this we have this and the table exists and if we look at the target comp compilation it's a little different now but here you can see it's just an insert statement it's not create or replace it's just insert and again that's just because we don't have any other strategy in place 
but let's now go to our invoices table. Okay, so here we can see we have this batch ID and now we have a new batch ID just for these three. So that's pretty nice. That's exactly what we wanted. Okay, let's just do it one more time. See it go through. Now we have two more that go through, but if we look at the current table, it's not there yet, right? So we still just have these three, but if we rerun the table, we refresh our incremental model here, just keep it going, it's all done. And let's look at it again. And here now we see two more in a separate batch. So we had batch one, batch two, batch three, and it's incrementally adding on. Sometimes you're gonna wanna update. Like let's say there's, you know, we look at this next one, we're gonna have a new value come through here that is updating. So it's going to take record one, invoice one that already exists, and we wanna change it. If we do nothing right now, what's gonna happen is it's just going to insert on top. Same with number four. These already exist, but maybe we're saying we want it to update. We don't want it to insert. How do you adjust that? There's what's called strategies. So incremental strategy. And really, actually I should go up here to defining a unique key. And when you define a unique key, you can do it in a few ways. You can just set a single value. You can say a collection of columns that collectively should be a unique value, or you can use what's called a surrogate key and use the dbt utils function to create that. Either way, the goal here is to create a unique column that dbt can look at and say, if this comes through and it already exists, match it up and update it. Don't insert a new record. Depending on your adapter, there's only certain strategies available to you. We're just going to define a unique key so that it'll kind of just understand that it needs to merge and update. And let's insert those new records. Again, we're saying there's two records now that we want to update old ones. So we have one and four, and now we have these new ones. I'm actually, I'm gonna copy both of these for right now. We're gonna just add one at a time, but I'll cut that out. So what we'll do is rerun now. All right, so now if we look at record one, in record four, it has new batch IDs and it has the new invoice at dates. It took the latest one, so it recognized it and it updated it, it didn't insert. The thing I wanna talk about here is this idea of columns changing. So I'm gonna control Z and add this back in here. And it's the idea of when your schema changes, whether you add a new column or your columns get deleted, how do you handle that within DBT? And there's different configurations for that. The possible values for on schema change for this is one, the default is just ignore. So even if there's something new, or there's something old, it's just gonna act like it didn't happen and not take any new action for it and just continue as is. Otherwise you could say fail, which is gonna say if anything's new, fail it, and then you'll have to go in and change it. Three is append new columns. So that means add new columns and the data going forward. It's not gonna retroactively update your final table, but it's also uh, not gonna remove any. Whereas sync all columns will do both add new ones and remove old ones on it to keep you consistently in sync. But as it says here, none of these are going to add old records. It's not gonna backfill for you. If you wanna do that, you need to do the full refresh flag, which will treat it like a table and just completely rebuild the whole thing. That's what you'll need to do. But let's play around with this and see how this works. This is going to add a new column to the raw table called payment terms. Let's uncomment this here. Let's change this instead of append new columns. Let's set this to fail just to show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna do a dbt run, and then when it gets to this incremental, it should fail, and it does, because the models are out of sync. And as it's saying here, you can change the on schema configuration and all the stuff we just talked about, or refresh it. So what we can do now instead, change this back to append new columns. Now let's try again. And we haven't added anything new with new data, so it should just add the column with all null values, but at least the column gets added, and you can see there, it didn't fail for us. So if we go back now and look at this. Here we can see payment terms was added, but no values exist. So what we'll do now is let's add a fourth batch. We'll add this in here. Let's go through and run it again. And again, we're not going to expect anything to backfill. We didn't add any data, but it's just data going forward. Preview again. We can see invoice 11 didn't make it. And why was that? So if we look at invoice 11, the invoice at date is 7.5. But if we order this by invoice at, there's something already in there for 7.6. And that's from the last one that we added the record we just inserted was seven five. And the reason that never made it through is because it got kept out during this filter because the invoice at for that one is actually less than the max invoice at. The max at is seven six. We're trying to do seven five, so it never gets included. But this one was greater, so it was fine. So that's why that happened. But now the highest value is eight six, so we need to make sure it's after that. So let's just do, I don't know, eight. Uh, let's just make sure that this can insert now. We'll go ahead and just insert that record. And now if we run this again, we would expect just that one record to get inserted. And there it is, so now 11's there, and we're good to go. And the last thing I wanna show you now is how do you completely refresh this table? Let's say something got out of sync and you just need to start over, or you know you wanna add new columns, backfill data, whatever that is, what do you do? 
So that's where that full refresh flag comes into play. So just to show you here, all the batch IDs here are a little different because we've been incrementally doing this as we've been going. But let's say we want to just start over, full refresh. The command we would do here is the same as before. So just running, but dash dash full dash refresh. And that's going to treat it as if it's a regular table, start completely over. You probably don't want to do this all the time. It's really just to, like I said, start over, but sometimes you got to do it. So now if we go back in after running that refresh, so everything's got the same batch ID now, but what you can also see is we have duplicates here. Invoice ID, there's two ones, there's two fours, two 11s. And these are the ones that we added updates for. But when you do the full refresh, at least in this example with nothing else adjusted, it's going to just add everything and not take into consideration updating anything because there was nothing there for it. You know, it just started over. All right, so hopefully now incremental models are no longer gonna trip you up when it comes to DBT and you feel comfortable building them in your own project. So thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.